going to go ahead and start our motions this morning. Uh, we just thank God for being here another day. We just thank him for just being God all by himself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to keep up uh, Sister Austin and uh, Sister Casey in prayer. Amen. I really miss Sister Austin. Oh, my goodness. I um I got a chance to talk to her. I just really, really miss her. So we're just going to ask that, you know, we all just keep uh, Sister Casey up in prayer and Sister Austin so that we can have her back really soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy. In what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Come on, one more time. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, and I live. My voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you Sound in your ears. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We
we exalt thee, oh Lord, we exalt thee, we Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide the fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. And I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide the fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, you provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. 
you pour out your spirit and i will open up inside fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up you provide the fire and i'll provide the sacrifice you pour out your spirit and i will open up inside fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over so fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare to take up our offering at this time. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise among us let the songs of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise Let the dance of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. Among us, let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh.
Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh. Praise the Lord. Lord. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I had to introduce somebody I've been knowing for a little minute. Um, He's somebody that I've come to learn to respect. Um, I don't think he's perfect, but I've come to respect him. And that's a big compliment to someone, especially when it's coming from your wife that you have someone in your household that you can respect. I respect him as a man of God, first of all. And because he's a man of God, everything else follows. He's a good husband. He takes care of our home, y'all. I can stand here and tell you that he is the man of our house. He pays all the bills. He pays all the bills. Okay, a real man. I know they don't make them like that no more, but he pays all the bills. So I have to give him honor because that's that's unknown just about these days, that a man is coming up like God put them in your household to be. He is the head of my household. And sometimes I must admit, sometimes he get a little shaky there because I don't be wanting to, you know, submit or whatever. I'll be like, you don't make all the decisions here, but he is the man of my household. So when he comes before you, he's not standing before you as breath and riches. He's standing before you as a man of God with authority, living the life that he's supposed to live. And that's a beautiful thing. If you want to have a leader, if you want to follow someone, I would rather follow someone that's preaching and doing what they're preaching. I would rather follow someone that knows the word of God and knows how to get something out of it. Because I always tell people, why would I serve a God that's not doing anything for me? But with the teaching that we get from the pastor, I can utilize what's in the word of God and everything. And I, I, I can't think of anything that I haven't gone to God for that was in his will that he did not provide for me. So I praise God. I, I will stand here and just tell you that he is the love of my life for 40. What is it? It's going to be 41 or 42 years this year. That's a long time because I didn't like anybody over 30 days. So for me to be... <laughs> 40-something years, he's got to be something special. So I praise God for him. Stand to your feet and give honor to the man of God, the speaker of the hour, none other than Pastor Samuel Boone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was just looking to see if Nadine had moved her bottle. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Amen. Thank God for this day. If you have your program in your hand, I know that the, the theme on that spelt wrong is faith working, not faith. I can't even tell what she wrote that walking or what. But anyway, it's faith working. We're coming from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we're going to read one verse from the book of Hebrews, 11 and 7. When you have it, say amen. That one verse reads, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, 
moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world to, and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. And today's thought is we're talking about faith working. Let us bow heads for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for this moment and for this hour, Lord, to be used as an instrument in your hand and unto your glory and unto your praise. Lord, open unto us words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let your word go forth, let it edify, let it build up, let it encourage, Father. We thank you, Father, for what we're going to receive this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ. You may be seated. Go on the Spirit of Christ, the deacon, saints, and friends. We thank God for this moment and for this hour. Because God has been good to us, hasn't he? I don't care what people are saying. Somebody's faith is working today. Because there are people who have testified about things that have happened in their lives. And they should have died. Or they should have been locked up. Or they should have lost everything. But somehow, some way, somebody believed. They trusted God. And God brought them out of their situations. And they began to start looking at the things that God was doing in their lives. We have so much science and technology on today. To, it's almost tempting. Because I know I used to, when I used to travel, I used to use a map. I used to just draw out my, my, my route where I'm going to go. But we got so much technology today, all I got to do is just put it in a GPS and all my turns and every route that I need to take is already prepared in advance. And it even tell me when I'm getting close, stop beeping, telling me, look, you're getting close. You're going to make a right turn, make a right, go straight, tell me how many miles, how many feet I'm away from the, the target that I'm trying to reach. All that technology is getting us to a point where we begin to trust it more than we begin to trust ourselves. Because that GPS, they turn right, and even I know left is the best way, sometimes I'll go right. Sometimes my wife gets bad with me because I argue with the GPS <laughs> as if it's alive. Sometimes I tell it, I say, no, nah, I ain't going that way. I'm going this way, as if I'm speaking to somebody. But it, it gets to a point where we put so much focus and things on the technology today until we forget about God. Sometimes we even rely more on our feelings and Sometimes our opinions and sometimes my own judgment or what other folks says, other than what God says. And the thing is that this here, one day God is going to judge the world. He's going to judge everybody in the world. And one day everybody, whoever you are and how long you've lived on this world, you're going to stand before God. And sometimes just the idea of telling people that there's going to come a day of judgment People ridicule you, and they kind of like laugh at you, talking about, you mean to tell me there's going to be a such thing as a, a judgment day? Yeah, there's going to be a judgment day. And the thing is about it is this here, God is. The Bible tells us that. He said, he that comes to God must believe that God is. And if God does exist, God is going to judge this world. Now, one thing about the coming judgment has been, some people say, it's been so long. It's been thousands and thousands of years, and God hasn't changed anything. Everything seemed to be going in the same direction. But how many of y'all know time and changes always happen? In fact, we recognize that through the seasons. Winter don't stay forever. Summer don't stay forever. Fall don't stay forever. They all come to an end, and they begin to change. The same thing happened with the world. The world changes all the time. Everything remains the same. Things begin to change. And the thing about our theme and our scripture today is taken from a story we read back in the book of Genesis. And this involving a man called Noah. And I want to talk about his faith and how faith works. Now, if you turn with me to the book of Genesis. I'm just going to read a few verses. I ain't going to read the whole sixth chapter of Genesis. But Genesis, the sixth chapter, we're going to read a few verses from now. We're going to start with verse 5, 
And then we're going to go down to verse 9. And then we're going to go to verse 14. And then 17 to 19. And then we're going to end on verse 22. Just going to give you an overview of what's going on in our text. And it says in Genesis 6 and verse 5. And it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the faults of his heart was only evil continuously. And it repented God or regretted the Lord that he had made man on the earth. He made him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for repented me that I have made them. Look at this eighth verse. I always like those first three letters. But no matter how bad it was seen, but changed everything. Huh? But Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. And it says, these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Wait, we heard that before. Enoch walked with God. Look at that 14th verse of that same chapter. It says this here. God was told Noah, say, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall you make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. I want you to notice that God gave him specifics in that verse. All right? Now go down to verse 17. And behold, I, even I, this is God speaking, do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under the heavens, everything that is in the earth shall die. But with you will I establish my covenant. And you shall come into the ark, you and your sons and your wives and your sons' wives with you. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall you bring into the ark to keep them alive with you. And they shall be male and female. And our last verse is verse 22. It says, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah, when we go back to our scripture text, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, the pattern out to the saving of his house. First thing I want you to notice is that in Noah's faith, his whole person was involved. The Bible says his mind was warned of God, his heart was moved with fear, and his will acted on what God said. When your faith is working, everything in your body is working because of your faith. God said, back as we read in the book of Genesis, God told Noah, he said, look, I'm going to destroy all flesh. Everything that breathes through the nostrils say, I'm going to destroy it. Man had reached a point, what you could say, of no return. And God was left with no choice but to what? To destroy mankind. But the Bible say there was one man that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the Bible say he walked with God. In other words, he worshiped and he, he honored God. Despite his surrounding, he still kept his faith in God. We saw that a few times last week. Your faith is really demonstrated that when you're in the dark, your light still flicker. Because it's in the dark where it wants to put out your light. And the Bible tells us the darkness comprehends it not. When your light is shining, the dark should be moving out. And the, nor in spite of all what was going around him, he still lived for God. He still believed that God existed. He still believed that God's word was true. And so the Bible tells us that God told him, he said, he warned him, he said, of things not seen as yet. Now, God told Noah, he said, look, I'm going to send a flood upon the earth. Now, I want you to understand, the Bible never mentioned anything about rain before. The Bible never mentioned anything about a rainstorm, a hurricane, a tornado, or anything. The Bible said that the earth was watered from a mist that came up from the ground. So people didn't know what was a rainstorm. People didn't know anything about rain. 
But God told him, he said, look, I'm going to flood the world so that to the highest mountain it's going to be covered with water. Now, can you imagine God telling him something that he's never even seen in his life, but he still trusted God's word? See, I'm going to tell you something about faith. Bible says faith is the substance of things not seen. It's the evidence of things. But the thing is that this, when we begin to look at the things that the word of God tells us, we say to ourselves sometimes, is this possible? Can this happen? Can this really change my life? Can this really make a difference in my life? God began to speak to him and said, look, there's a judgment coming. I'm going to send rain. Uh, the first question, if I was Noah, I would ask him, say, what is rain? <laughs> the thing is that this here, he didn't ask God any questions. All he know that when God told him he was going to send rain, Noah believed that warning. The Bible say, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen, he said, he moved. I'm going to tell you something. When your faith is in God, it causes a reaction that take place in your life. Faith will influence your emotions. Faith will influence your lifestyle. Faith will cause you to move. You see, when he believed what God said, it caused him to move. Faith first influenced his mind. He thought about what God was going to do. And he said, look, God said he's going to destroy this world. It caused an affection to happen in him. See, your faith can always move in your affection first. Sometimes when you begin to look at it, if it's good, it's because love and joy that come up in your life. But if it's bad, you begin to fear and think about what's getting ready to happen. So the first thing it starts to do is start to influence your affections. It begins to influence your mind. And his mind thought about what was getting ready to happen. And he said, look, I got to do something. And so the Bible tells us that his mind moved him to prepare an ark. Now the thing is about this ark is this here. It's one thing to build a ship by the ocean. It's one thing to build the ship and have the ability to transport it to the ocean. But I believe Noah built this ark in the middle of a forest, way away from the, the ocean. And I believe he believed God at such a point that his faith caused him to do things that people would say was ridiculous. I'm here to tell you once you begin to walk out and step out on faith, the people around you will say, you crazy. You've lost your mind. Can you imagine Peter being in the boat and Jesus say come everybody in the boat say man you crazy why would you step out this boat and knowing that you're going to drown in the ocean but faith will cause you to move there's nobody who's trusted in God haven't had some kind of reaction in their life some kind of change in their life God has moved you to do things that you wouldn't do on your own God has moved you to think different God have moved you to act in ways that normally you would say it's crazy but God's faith in your life have caused you to bring a change I've left my friends they never thought I would leave them but it moved me to leave my friends I left the things that I used to enjoy it caused me to leave those things a lot of things that I used to say God's faith has caused me to quit saying those things because faith will cause you to move your practice won't be the same thing. Your habits won't be the same thing. Because when you got faith in what God has said, it began to change everything about you. But I would say he was moved with fear. And because he was moved with fear, he began to prepare an ark to the saving of his house. Now, the thing is, once we begin to move. We were moving in a goal with a direction in mind. I'm not living this life just to be living it. I got a goal in mind. That's something I see at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and it ain't just a bright light. There's a goal in mind. You see, I'm not wasting my time. He wasn't wasting his time cutting down trees and 
building a, 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 a ark about the size of a, a ocean liner. Because can you imagine the work that it took and to do all this to gather up all that wood and to build this ark? The Bible said that he was moved with fear and he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Now, he knew God was what God was. 